Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another counter side video. Okay, so I missed out some of the uh, guide previously for the selector. Uh, that was my bad. Never make guides 4 a.m. in the morning, alright? Sometimes you just miss things. I can't believe I totally missed these two things, alright? Which is the most important one in my opinion. Alright, so this is uh, going to be the selector that you get. The ship selector, alright? We're gonna talk about this in more detail since we have more time in this video. And then we're going to talk about the uh, operator as well. Okay, so let's talk about the ship selector. What do you want to... What's the strategy for ships generally? If you are new to the game, right? Uh, notice this ship, you can choose out of three ships. There's going to be Enterprise, there's going to be uh, New Ohio, and there's going to be Kamizumi. Now, Enterprise by far is the best choice right here. So, uh, until today, Enterprise is still really, really good. Really, really solid ship for a lot of new players. Now the reason why is because Enterprise, you can sort of control uh, the output of the damage. Let me give you guys a better idea. Now if you are a new player, most likely you'll get your free Xiu Yun. Uh, Xiu Yun right here. I just want to briefly touch about this combo that a lot of players need to take note of or take advantage of. Uh, this is something that uh, I think a lot of players know by now. Veteran players. But if you're new to the game, Xiu Yun has one of the strongest passive skill in the game. So what is this passive skill? It increases attack by 20% or 30% rather if you upgrade skill to level 5 for 10 seconds for all allies on the field when deployed. This is insane. Alright, this is by far the best buffer uh, in terms of the output damage. In raids, after you deploy all your other characters raids, you can bring 24 characters, right? 23 characters on the map you put her last, everyone gets 30% attack boost for 10 seconds, which is huge, mind you. It's really, really big. So something that you want to take note of if you are new to the game, right? Enterprise gives you a lot of flexibility with Xiu Yun, all right, which makes it really, really good for new players. So let me jump into the ship and show you what Enterprise does. So Enterprise skill right here uh, on this one, the ultimate skill, right? So notice a uh, release jet stream, blah blah blah. The targets lose 30% attack and 30% defense for 8 seconds. So the idea here is a lot of uh in a lot of raids, auto guides, whatever, or danger close to an extent, right? You use enterprise ultimate skill, alright, to make the enemies lose 30% of defense, and then you buff everyone in your map using Xiu Yun. And then that everyone gets a 30% attack buff at the same time. It's just a lot of uh, it's a lot of boost, a lot of damage boost right there. So this is something that I think uh, a lot of you guys need to take note of and be wary about, which is what makes Enterprise really, really strong. If Xiaoyun doesn't exist, right? And I think a lot of you guys know every single guide, every single raids, uh, maybe some danger close or whatever. You will always include a Xiaoyun at the end. If you don't know who to use, who to bring, just include a Xiaoyun at the end you're going to be able to beat a stage so easily, alright? And if Xiu Yun don't exist, I don't think Enterprise would be as good as it is. But it's just the nature of, you know, this combination of these two which makes it really, really strong. So highly recommended if you guys, uh, hopefully you guys are aware of this technique and a lot of you guys know. By now, Xiu Yun, very, very strong. Uh, Enterprise, the best ship for beginners. If you already have Enterprise, who's, which one is the next best choice, right? The thing is, if you have Enterprise, you probably don't need Kamizumi. They sort of do the same thing for PvE, unless you're talking about PvP specifically. Uh, Kamizumi has something uh, that is similar to what Yensing can provide, All right, which is why some people choose not to pull for Yensing. So let's talk about Kamizumi. Let me jump into the... I just wish you can see from there specifically. We're going to talk about both Kamizumi and... New Ohio, which I do not have. Wait, I do have New Ohio, but I do not have Kamizumi. So Kamizumi is most likely what I'm going to pick because I already got Enterprise and New Ohio out of that list, so Kamizumi makes the most sense. So Kamizumi has very good uh, passive skill, right? The passive skill is what makes it good. Uh, increase crit and crit damage for all ally units on the field, all right? And the this one, the ultimate skill doesn't do much. It just increase, it just knocks them back. And this skill haste is the ship skill haste, not, not the character skill haste, not to be confused. Uh, but this one is good. The special skill, the active skill, the first one, it removes one of permanent buff. It's very good to, uh, if you don't have Yensing or whatever, it can remove certain things like uh, immortality buff or stealth buff, those things. 
which can be quite a good counter to Albion in PvP, right? So Kamizumi is a very good PvP ship. For PvE, I do think Enterprise is still going to be slightly better in most scenarios, in most cases, especially uh, Danger Close and Raids right now. If you don't know like what ship to use, most of the time Enterprise is going to be your best bet. But the two ships are quite similar. If you have Enterprise, you probably won't need Kamizumi unless Enterprise can't be used in that area. But there's no such thing unless it's a Danger Close where you can only use one ship for this and the other ship for that. And in that case, I would highly suggest you guys to pick New Ohio. Not because New Ohio is good, New Ohio is decent, but because New Ohio is a requirement to be able to build New Detroit, which is one of the best ships ever, period. Now, if you pick New Ohio, try and see if you can build New Detroit fast, all right? So New Detroit is by far going to be one of the best ship. Until today, it's still a very, very strong ship. This ship actually got buffed once, if you guys are not aware. A uh, Striker's attack plus 20% and attack speed plus 15%. This is a huge buff, all right? And then the ultimate skill as well, enemies exposed to the dust will lose 50% defense for 12 seconds. You can also pair this with Xiyun, which what makes this ship also equally as insane, right? 50% defense reduction very huge huge burst right there you can pair with like lonely chifuyu all the other defense debuffers enemy is going to lose a bunch of uh, defense for sure now this ship new detroit if you have this ship right this is going to make the next operator even stronger which is what we're going to talk about in this one so before that let's wrap up ship priority in my humble opinion, Enterprise number one. If you already have Enterprise, followed by New Detroit, so that you can build new, new uh, sorry, New Ohio, so that you can build New Detroit, and then the last one will be Kamizumi. Now, in the operator, this one is going to be a little bit tricky. Now, if you have New Detroit, Lee Suyon is going to be really, really strong. Lee Suyon and New Detroit, by far, by far, going to be a very, very good combo. So let's talk about all of these characters. I just wish we can look at the skills from here, but uh, I'm going to use Pain and then we're just going to boom, bam, bam. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about all of this individually, give you guys a better idea uh, per se. We're going to jump into the collection, so from there we can talk about them in a much better manner. So Lee Suyon, best pair is with the new Detroit ship. If you have new Detroit, this one is so good. Stun immunity. Attack plus 20%, roll advantage damage, incoming plus 30%, 30.75% to all ally strikers. And the condition is so easy to activate. A striker, ranger, striker, alright? So if you have new Detroit and you want to pair with uh, Lee Suyon for operator, definitely she's a decent choice. But is she the best choice out of everyone here? Uh, in my humble opinion, no. Alright, so if you are looking for Danger Close specifically, Anastasia Chernova is actually not bad, alright? Anastasia Chernova has something called incoming damage increase. So it increased the damage taken amplif amplifier or amplification by 20.5% to all enemies for 12 seconds. This, keep in mind, this is at level 8. I think at level 1 is more like 10% uh, or something like that. So keep that in mind. So not bad. I would say Anastasia Chernova more flexible than Lee Suyon. But in terms of the activation, this one is Striker, Defender, Ranger, which I don't really like it as much because in most cases, putting Striker first doesn't make as much sense compared to putting Defender first. So let's talk about Chloe Starseeker, which I honestly think she is the best choice. So I'm going to rate her as the number one right here for priority. Now, why am I rating Chloe Starseeker as number one? So the reason why I rate her at number 1 is because she can do something that no one else can and gives you a lot of quality of life which is enable you to auto inhibitor rate. If you guys are aware, inhibitor rate, Chloe Starseeker allows you to do that, right? So Chloe Starseeker has the ability to sleep. Uh, if you have played inhibitor rate, you will notice the boss is at the back and there's one shield guy with the big arms standing in front. You can slip that guy and force that guy to move towards you. I've already done inhibitor rate guides on my channel. You can search it up all right, on YouTube. Uh, cancels all enemies barriers, adds defense minus and sleep for 8 seconds. So Chloe enables you. It just gives you so much quality of life. It gives you so much quality of life that there's no reason for you to not pick her if you can't, if you don't have her yet. 
just to be able to auto inhibitor rate is just the convenience factor. I feel like that's what gives her the value for me. So personally, I would, I am going to pick her because I don't have her yet. Now, who is the second one after Chloe, right? It's either going to be Lee Suyeon or Anastasia Chernova. Now this is going to be dependent on very strictly you. They are both equal at number two, I would say, uh, in terms of priority. But I would say Lee Suyeon would have the priority because she is actually quite strong. But only pick her if you think you have enough rangers and new Detroit ship. If you don't have, even if you don't have new Detroit ship, later on you are going to build that, and I don't think I don't see that as an issue. I do think that I use Lee Suyeon more than Anastasia Chernova. Now let's talk about Olivia Park and Lena McKenzie. Let's first talk about her. All right, Lena McKenzie. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Some of you guys might be shocked to hear me say this, but she's like the worst one in this list. Now why is she the worst one? Fun fact, I actually picked Lena McKinsey as my first operator on C server. Like, I actually picked her. She is the first operator that I purchased when operator came in C server. I bought her first. And then now I almost never use her ever, ever, ever again. So adds attack and attack speed plus 15% to all allies for 12 seconds. It seems good on paper and it really is. Like, I, the reason why I bought her is I thought she's going to be versatile. I thought she's going to be flexible. But she just, in terms of flexibility and versatility, you're better off going for Kim Hana. Now, Kim Hana is something that is not available on this list. So hopefully you guys buy her whenever you can. Wherever that you can use Lena McKinsey, right? In any situation that you can use Lena McKinsey, it's just straight up better to use Kim Hana. Now, why is that, right? Kim Hana gives you one deployment cost which can make you, it allows you to deploy everyone faster. It depends on what you need. The flexibility is there already. If you need more damage, that one deployment cost can help you to stack up. Uh, you can put your ranger or something or sniper, right? If you need more, uh, your tank is dying, your defender is dying, that one deployment cost can push you to hopefully try to uh, deploy your, your twins or something to tank in front. And if you, you can also want to heal, uh, yeah, that one extra deployment cost, you know, you need one extra, put Claudia, everyone heals. So much flexibility, so much flexibility. Sleep immunity is also very good and 20% skill haste to all deploy allies for 15 seconds. This is more than you think. Uh, 15 seconds is a very long time and 20% skill haste is just insane. Uh, in most cases that, you know, the flexibility that she provides is just invaluable. So by far, if you have Kim Hana, you're not going to use Lena McKenzie ever again. She's like the She's like the go-to uh, character to use in terms of uh, any PvE stage. If you don't know who to use in that stage, chances are Kim Hana is just the, the right character to use. Ranger supporter is so easy to activate as well. Only two SSR units or two units to activate, right? Rather, compared to something like Lina McKinsey, which is like a ranger, sniper, and striker, which is actually quite hard to do because you ideally want to put defender or strikers first. There's no way you put ranger and sniper first. So it's like you can see... Her activation is quite limiting. Now, I'm not saying that she's uh, worthless and completely useless, but I feel like, again, I stopped using her on C server. That tells you as much, you know? So let's talk about the last one, Olivia Park. Olivia Park is... She's not used much in PvE as well. She gives cancels harmful uh, effects, grants 15% damage reduction, and HP recovery per second. But you're better off... You know, using like Claudia, Evelyn to heal your characters rather than relying on an operator. So Kim Hana is still going to be better than her in most cases to be able to heal because more skill haste means you can heal faster as well if you have supporters on the map, right? Uh, and also one deployment cost which is going to push you a little bit. Depending on how long the battle lasts, you might be able to get multiple Kim Hanas out. So by far, Olivia Park, uh, much more of a PvP Definitely much more of a PvP uh, character or operator. If you play PvP a lot, there's certain strats that you can use Olivia Park for sure. But yeah, like I mentioned, based on this list, I would say prioritize on Chloe Starseeker, followed by Lee Suyeon, followed by Anastasia Chernova, uh, and then Olivia Park is like the third one. And then if you don't, if you already have everything, then this will be the, uh, the last choice. I would highly recommend Lina McKenzie last. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Again, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the guides. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll be making a Seoyun, Awakened Seoyun guide. Thoughts on it for the next one. 
I'm not sure what guide you guys want to see on the channel. Let me know as well. I think somebody asked me to do inhibitor guide, but I've already done that on the main channel. So I don't see the need of doing more, but I'll see what I can do. I might have, uh, somebody told me there must be a new, I think there's a new strat or something. But yeah, we can, I'll see what I can do. All right, so take care. If you haven't already subscribed, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.